I mentioned yesterday that for the first time, and I did try to do some research today without significant success. I'm relying on my memory, which increasingly is um, something I shouldn't be relying on. But anyway, um, it is the first time, I think, in about six or seven years that the people of Cape Town have used in excess of 1,000 megalitres of water on average over a seven-day period. Yesterday's figure, revealed in the weekly water dashboard, was 1,003 megalitres per day over seven days. It's hot. Uh, the dams are still in the mid- mid-80s, and if we have something approaching a um, normal rainfall season this winter, then we will end the season with full dams. But what happens if we don't? At what point do we start talking about better messaging around using less water? At what stage do we ask the city or does the city ask us via further restrictions and so on? Dr. Peter Johnston, climate scientist at UCT, with the alter ego weatherman Pete. Hello, Peter. Hi, John. Um, yeah, so are we, are we using too much water or with this wind and with this these temperatures? And, John, as I said in my weatherman Pete column yesterday, we haven't had rain for X number of days. So this is reasonable, John. Yes. Um, I'm looking at the records now, and, and you're right. All the, there was a slight peak in February um, this year where we used over a thousand. But it goes back really to December um, 2015 um, and the three-month period there where we used a lot of water. And, and the question is, why are we using more water? And, and I, I want to just go deeper than that and ask, is it because we're using more or are we wasting more? And I think there's, there's a little a lot of depth in that understanding of what we need in terms of water and, and what we use and how much we're actually wasting. I, I happened to take the dogs for a walk yesterday went past a public sports field, and I could hear a funny noise coming from the clubhouse, which hasn't been used for at least two months because they've been redoing the field. And I heard a tap running inside, and I managed to poke my head in the window, and there's a basin tap running at full ball for a month. Now, okay, I don't know how much water that is, but let's say it's two or three swimming pools, and it's not uh, huge in the biggest picture, big picture. But I think we've become a little lackadaisical. It's been four or five years since we had a big drought. There's a new generation of house owners. There's a new generation of people taking control of their water usage. And I think we're missing a trick. Uh, as my friend Kevin Winter always says, let's save water while we have it. So the next question you're going to ask me is, is whether we should impose restrictions, I think. And there always is that. If people are using too much, then, then restrictions are important. But I don't think that's the right answer. I think we need to really educate people, give them a good idea of how much it is reasonably to use, give them an idea of how to study their water account. I find the water account confusing. It comes in the email, you look at it and their charges and it breaks it down into kiloliters per day and it's a decimal uh, number and then there's an extra charge depending on your pipe size. And I think that's confusing. I think the city could come and say, look, this is how much water you could reasonably be expected to use, whether it's 150 litres a day per person, 200 litres or whatever, and try and work out ways of doing that and making that a habit. And, and I think that's a start that we should be considering. Um, somebody called Ray has called to say you're forgetting about the, um, the very welcome... Um, what's the word? Very welcome influx of tourists and the, all the water they drinking. So, again, Ray doesn't seem to think it's a problem. You know, I don't. I, you know, I think that's a cyclical thing, and, and, and as many people go on holiday as probably come into Cape Town, it might not seem so. But the, the water demand um, will go up in those holiday seasons, and, and generally that is summer. So that does put a put an extra load on our resources. But it's very temporary, and, and I don't think we can say that it's a problem. And in, and in fact, the, the extra revenue that is generated in the economy, I think, levels out throughout, throughout the whole city, if you like. Um, but I'm not the economist. I can't really point at that. I think that the bigger question is how long we can endure like this. And, and we know, looking at the graphs, that from the beginning of February, well, let's say from the end of February to the next rains, 
Well, from when the dams are full, if you like. So let's say when the, when the rains ended in winter till the next rains come, we, we lose about 40%. We use about 40% of the dam's capacity. So we generally, on an average, go from 100% to around about 60%. And then we have a dry year, and we go lower to 50%, 40%, and in dire situations, we go down to 20 So we can fully expect the land levels to sink to 60% by the start of the rainy season. And then the question is, what's the rainy season going to look like? Now, we've had three years, well, let's not say three years. Last year wasn't a particularly good rainfall year. But we have had normal rainfall for, for a while. Um, it's not as regular as it used to be. And we had that big drought in between. But we have to ask ourselves, so what if we don't get a good winter rainfall? And I'm just looking at a forecast now, which is very, very far in advance. It's from the IRI in the U.S., which is suggesting that we might have mild, drier conditions this winter. And I, and I take that with a very big pinch of salt. So the question, if we, if we put it that way, what if we don't have a good winter rainfall? And I think already we should be looking at installing more rain tanks, looking at gathering water from springs, um, getting, getting extra storage into our own personal capacity if we can afford it. We're also asking the, the city and those who are in the know and those who are using water to try and you know, gather as much water as they can from sources whether it's schools, whether it's sports fields, whether it's public buildings. Because I think we can build a buffer and not just go back to the old days and we thought, oh, the dams will fill and everything will be fine. And I think many of us have done that. There's certainly more tanks around. But in a dry summer like we've had now, my tank's, em my tank's empty. Uh, that's it. I have no more reserve. And therefore, I have to use things for water. Let's hope people are listening and thinking twice. Dr. Peter Johnston, climate scientist at UCT.